situation and ask you to work mightily on their behalf. Lord, we love you. We ask you that those that are we're lifted up in prayer would feel the power of prayer and that you are an awesome working God. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. And amen. We're going to run through some stuff. My podium, I like this barrel. I got some room on here. Uh, I'm going to go through my announcements from Sunday. We do have quite a few announcements, but as you know, the rodeo is coming up on us real, real quick. So, uh, We'll run down some things. We don't. I tell you what we'll do, Scott. Where's Scott at? Uh, you and uh, Tony, would you grab the little wooden church and set it on a barrel? Always forget that. Bring one for me and yeah. We, we don't pass that Cowboy Church. There'll be a little wooden church down here. And uh, if God puts it on your heart to give you your tithes and offerings, that's what it's for. Thank you for your faithful giving. We're able to do the things that we do. Isn't it nice to be sitting in a brand new set of bleachers on the Amen. east side of the arena? Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. That was a pretty weak hand clap for bleachers. How many of you remember sitting in chairs? Yeah. How many of you sit, remember sitting in the dirt? So let's give the Lord a hand clap for those bleachers. Amen. He is worthy of our praise. Uh, let's see. I'm going to have to worry about the nursery tonight. Uh, round pin on Sunday mornings. Rodeo will be next. Not this Friday, Saturday, but the next so make sure you're on the list, and if you're not on the list, see somebody, or if you haven't been contacted, we'll find you a place to serve. Uh, we're going to have a work day. This Sunday, we're going to have a monthly planning meeting, which shouldn't take a long, long time, just because we know our whole planning is around the rodeo. We're doing really good. Got it organized, but we'll go over some things for, uh, for this Sunday for the rodeo, May 20th and 21st. Uh, we a few carpenters we appreciate. We already got one side of the restrooms uh, set up, so thankful for the carpenters that volunteered. They'll be back tomorrow as well. On Sunday, we're moving these poles all back. Mr. Kurt and Chris, our welder, is going to have our wire. So Sunday after church, we'll have a little work day and hang all, as many banners as we can on Sunday. If we don't finish, 
We'll do some next Wednesday night, which is kind of a good time to have a little work day out in the arena. We'll have a prayer time and, and just button up everything and get ready for the rodeo on, on Friday of next week. 6.40 a.m. Don't forget to watch the devotions in the morning. Watch them anytime and Tuesday. Testimonies, May 15th, this Sunday afternoon at 6 o'clock. Shane Young and his daughter are planning a barrel race. It'll be in the afternoon. And today was Church in the Dirt, Welcome Wagon. We'll probably get together again on the Welcome Wagon, make sure we got a detailed plan Sunday. And I believe that is all of our announcements. So we've got a few little work days. Everybody blessed tonight? Amen. 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 Look at your neighbor and say, God bless you today. God bless you today. How many of you? Can tell the sun's shining out there. <laughs> now y'all can walk around. Look at them. Y'all y'all wave at those people over there and, and tell them how nice and comfortable y'all are. No sun in your eyes. <laughs> hey, but we're gonna make I want to share with you uh some scripture here and our job as Christians and, and y'all know that we have the rodeo coming up and uh, we got a lot going on in our church. There's a whole group of people probably still in to celebrate recovery, some of them. Uh, so we have a Wednesday night Bible study there. Uh, but our job is literally to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, it's God's job to... We're, we're to be fishers and God does the cleaning. How many of you know fishing is the fun part? When you start cleaning fish, it turns into work. And that's God's part. He uses us and works through us. But... Our job is to reach people. The Great Commission, how many of you are familiar with the Great Commission in the Bible? It is the commission that God gave us to spread the gospel. And He said, the Lord Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now let's say that scripture together out loud. Go into all the world, preach the gospel to how many creatures? Every, every creature. So go into all the world, preach the gospel. That is our job. Now you might say, I'm not a preacher. But yet, really, you are. I heard an old preacher one time said, preach the gospel always, and if you absolutely have to, use words. So we preach the gospel through the lives that we live, and it's not always what we want to preach, right? Anybody ever had one of those days? You're like, Ooh, hope nobody was reading my Bible today, reading me as the only Bible they might read. But our job as a great commission is to let our light shine and to go into all the world. And we can do that in so many ways. Not everybody goes out on the forefront and does the preaching, but there's always somebody behind them, either supporting them, praying for them. How many of you know that's just as important? And we don't categorize things in, in God's kingdom like we do necessarily in the world. So the Great Commission is our job. It is to go in the world, preach the gospel, especially the Cowboy Church. We have such an opportunity to reach completely unchurched people. I don't know that I would be able to stand before you and say that I'm a Christian today had it not been for the Cowboy Church. They taught the, or brought the gospel to me in a way that it was simple, and yet I could understand it. An old bow-legged cowboy preacher uh, shared the gospel with me, and man, it was just a few weeks. I started parking way out there in the parking lot, getting a little closer every week. You know, you know what that means? That means God's working on you, amen? He starts drawing on you, the Holy Spirit. And, and our job is literally to carry out, as a Christian, the Great Commission. Now, I'm going to read a couple of scriptures to you off this barrel. Hebrews chapter 12. And when we do get done here, we'll just start loading them sheep. And then we will uh, go right, right into that. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to read you here. I think I can see better outside. I don't even need my glasses. <laughs> Hebrews 12. There's sweat on them anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm having to adapt to this summertime. We're just now getting used to it, right? Yesterday, I was huffing and puffing it. I shoot a few horses early yesterday morning, and man, I had to fire out the fan. Hebrews chapter 12, I'm going to read verse 1 through verse 3. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge cloud of witnesses to the life of faith, now, isn't that cool? We're surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses. Can I get a good amen? amen. I think about people that's went on. If you watch Tuesday Testimony, I think about Mr. Ted there on that let out gate and how his heart was so involved in our arena ministry. And many of our other loved ones, and maybe your own loved ones that I didn't even know, but they are cheering us on. People, Christians that have went on to be with the Lord the Bible says that they're literally in what we call the grandstands of heaven. 
So we see all these bleachers here, and it kind of brings it to, <laughs> to reality that there's a grandstands in heaven, and those people in the grandstands are Christians that have went on to be with the Lord are literally cheering you and I on. So when we get discouraged, any of us ever been discouraged before? You know, I mean, we all have. We've been discouraged, beat down. you got to listen, and you got to know that there's, <laughs> there's those, a, a large crowd of witnesses of those that have went on before us cheering us on, having a pep rally for us. It says you're surrounded by such a, <laughs> a huge crowd of witnesses of the life of faith. Listen to this. Let us strip off every weight and, and that slows us down. So we have weights and sins that do what? They slow us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Listen to this. What's our job? It is the Great Commission. We'll slow it down here just a second. Since we're surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses of the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Let's say it together. The sin that so easily trips us up. And everybody's trip us up sin is a little bit different. Anybody here knows planted? Boy, you was doing good. You got tripped. That's what sin will do to us. He says, don't let that slow us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. Here we go. And let us run with endurance or patience the race. And say that with me. The race. Not that I've set before you, but that God has set before us. So he says, let us run with patience and endurance the race God set before you. So when God put you on this earth, he had a call and a purpose and a race that you are to run for him. And we don't want to let sin weigh us down and slow us down or even get us off track. Verse 2 says we do this, we run this weight race with patience by keeping our eyes on who? Anybody ever heard this scripture? On Jesus, the champion that initiates and perfects our faith. One translation says he is the author and finisher of our faith. So the way we run our race for Christ, and we're running a race this week and anytime we're alive on this earth as a Christian, our job at the rodeo is to Love on people, be kind to them, share the gospel in our own little way, Just sometimes just to smile. But we have to run our race, and this is part of the race that God set before us. We keep our eyes on Jesus because of the joy awaiting Him. He endured the cross. Jesus went to the cross and didn't really want to do it, but He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now He is seated in the place of honor besides God's throne, Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Let me say it again. Think of all that Jesus went through. Then you won't be weary and give up. Can I get a good amen? amen. There's no quitters in the body of Christ. And you know, you think about that scripture that we're to run our race. It's set before us. We have a great commission that's given to us and it's our responsibility to carry that great commission out. God is dependent on each one of us in our own simple yet unique way to do what He has called us to do. Now I want to share something. My, my daughter, we mailed her a couple of Bibles uh, when she was away for a while. And this, this particular devotion the day she got out was very powerful. I'm going to read it to you. She read it to us that day and Kind of, she cried like a baby. And so it's directed to a woman. So if you are a man, just say, dear son. This is what the, the Bible study that day was in, in her Bible. It says, the Lord of heaven's armies, the Lord God of Israel is no idol. He is the creator of everything that exists, including Israel, his own special possession. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. Jeremiah 10, verse 16. Beloved daughter or son, I created everything you see and experience. I have appointed you as my own special possession. I'm going to read that again. God says, I have appointed you as my own special possession to lead others to me. Life will become a great adventure if you step out and help those who are too weak to help themselves. Speaking of sharing the gospel with people in the Great Commission. I will use all of your experiences for good. How many of us have some bad experiences? Raise your hand. God says, I'll use all your experiences for, for good in your life and in the lives of others. 
You don't have to hide behind your fears and insecurities any, any longer as a Christian. I will turn your pain into a passion and change the world around you. I will be with you as you help those who struggle to find hope in this world. Love your Heavenly Father. Reflection says nothing is bigger than the Creator of heaven and earth. Only God is worthy of, our, of your awe and fear. Perfect peace comes when you realize that God is always bigger than any pain you experience and stronger than any enemy you face. Nothing is bigger than God. And here's the prayer. It says, Lord, help your son or daughter not to experience fear as he or she steps out into ministry. Strengthen her spirit as she works for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, isn't that a powerful set of devotions and scriptures, how God wants to use us? And we need to ask Him, God, strengthen me. Use me because God uses us. It may be just a handshake. It may just be a smile. Everybody smile at me right quick. Some of you didn't smile. Everybody smile. Hey, gum, y'all look better when you smile. Amen. So smiling is contagious too. I'm going to make sure this bunch is smiling. I see them over there. But God wants to use us. We have a great commission and most of our life, if we're not careful, is spent making excuses of why we can't do something for God. But we all can do something for God. We can all get involved. And uh, I want to encourage you with those scriptures that we've been given the great commission and God simply wants us at that point to... Obey. Everybody say obey. 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 One more time on three. One, two, three. Obey. obey. Now this is the dog I just got. His name is Ben. Everybody say hi, Ben. Hi, Ben. Ben ain't seen this many people in his whole life. Ben come from Kentucky. He's pretty much a finished dog. Now, I don't know how he'll do things in front of a large crowd. I brought him out here earlier and pinned all his steers in the back, just me and him on foot. Uh, but with all these people, he may look at look at y'all like a calf at a new gate. But it don't really matter because he needs this experience. So if he fails, I'm going to say, well, boys, this is what you don't need to do. Amen. <laughs> but if he gets these steers in or whatever I ask him to do, that will be great. But uh, take in mind, he just pulled in here last night from Kentucky. And uh, he's, he's a smart dog. He's smarter than I am. He's training me. So I'm working with him. I'm going to breed some of these border collies and use them a little bit. But I'm going, to, I'm going to do something with Ben right quick. And we're talking about, everybody say obedience. obedience. Now whether Ben is obedient, I know he is because I didn't see him work. One of these boys seen him work back here. So we'll see how he does with all these people. And it's kind of the same way in our lives. How many of you know we have comfort zones? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh boy. We got comfort zones, and we don't like it when God gets us out of our comfort zone, do we? Now, hey, God, you know, I'll make a post on Facebook and invite somebody to church. Don't put them in my face. Or whatever it may be, we got comfort zones. And Ben has a lot of comfort zones. He, he spent five years on a, on a cow-calf operation in Kentucky. And he works off of uh, uh, his, his human at the time, worked off of a side-by-side -side or a truck or very seldom a horse. He'd just go out the back of the truck, let him out talk to him out of the front seat. So everything's a lot different. He's never seen this many people. But we are, that's all them sheep right where they at there. I don't want to bring them down that alley yet. Uh, so we'll get Ben out of his comfort zone. Amen? And then we'll load them sheep. All right. I'm going to get them. we get everybody. Bring them steers out the alley and just put them out there in the arena and I'm going to get over here out of the way. And then I'll get all the men to kind of get over behind the bucket sheets or something. If this don't work, I'll say, well, that's okay. It's a handler area. It's bad when the dog's training a human. Amen? <laughs> uh-oh, uh-oh, Ben. All right. Now I'll leave that lid out gate open. We can just go to the inside with it. And then we'll get all get out of there and just find a hole or over in the corner or something. All right. Now we're going. My, my goal is to get Ben. He's trained, and his job is to herd cattle. Now he just came here yesterday, but I ain't scared much. I'll turn him loose if it messes up. I'll turn it into a sermon. It's what I used to do when I couldn't break a bat. I'd say, "Well, that bat's real strong. Y'all need to be strong for Jesus." Amen. All right, Ben. You got a lot of people here, Ben. Ben. 
Away. 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 Look back. Look back. Away. Away. Look back. Look back, Ben. Back. Back. Black steer's coming home. That'll do. That'll do. Here. Away. Away. Get a hold. Wrong side of the bed. Push up. Oh, no, they talking back to him. Get him, Ben. It's like I ain't never seen. Push him up, Ben. I'm going to have to help him out. He's looking at all them people and kids. Here. We may catch him and look at Ben. Here. 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 I'll catch him. I'm like at home. Here. Oh. Somebody's whistling. If he hears that whistle, don't whistle. Here. Oh. He's good. There we go. Here. come to you tonight. We ask you to continue to use us throughout this year, Lord, in our endeavors here at the church. Those that call this place home, we just ask you to use us all. May we decrease and you increase. May we be obedient like old Ben here, Lord. May we learn to go gather up the strays and bring them on back in the let out gate, which is a pretty dang good sermon, really. Because we've all been out in the pen. <laughs> and you said the Holy Spirit to go get us just like this dog. We love you, Lord. Those that may be here and you've never accepted Christ, I want you to know Jesus died on the old rugged cross for your sin. If you never accepted Him, today's the day. Just like these steers finally gave in and come on back out this hole. They'd only done that once in their life, but or with Him. But uh, they give in and they surrender. So I'm going to challenge you tonight, wherever your heart's at, it may be hard, it may be soft, but do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And if you don't, tonight's the night you need to know Him. I want you to pray this prayer with me if you've never accepted Him. He died on the cross for your sin. And He simply wants you to give Him the reins of your life. This is a prayer I prayed in 1993. Let's pray it together. Oh God, I realize I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Jesus, I know You died on the cross for my sin. And I ask You to come into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. And have Your way in my life, Lord. I give You the reins of my life. In Jesus' name. And everybody see it? Amen. Read that prayer. Come uh, come see me at church. See some of the lay pastors or elders here at the church. We're going to go ahead and run them sheep in. We'll start this mutton bus and I'll keep the mic here. we got about six mutton busters and then we got a steer rider or two. So, hey, we're just going to have...